I never thought that I would find musical satisfaction in creating something out of the coronavirus genome. I was searching for music within what I was hearing, and I could hear something musical. It's been a fairly convoluted pathway and a really interesting journey to resolve my musical side and my science side. I've come into academia fairly late in life. I'm a lecturer in molecular biology here at Western Sydney University. I do research into DNA, anti-cancer drugs, and bioinformatics. Did my PhD as a middle-aged student. Prior to coming to university, I used to play drums in the Hummingbirds. I was in a rock and roll band. The Hummingbirds. We were a Sydney-based band, late 80s, early 90s. I spent five years of my life being a professional musician. I had a passport and it said musician in the passport, which I was very proud of. But I think with all bands, they have a limited lifespan and I figured I can't imagine myself playing drums when I'm 50. I should point out, I'm now turned 60 and I played drums last week, so completely nonsense. But I didn't know that there were jobs with arts degrees or arts things. So I thought, be safe and go to uni and do a science, something more pragmatic. So I tried to reinvent myself and put the band behind me. And then I came across this technique called sonification, which is the use of audio for data analysis. Typically, we look at a visual display for perception, but I'm using the black box to create an audio display for perception. So rather than looking at the sequence, we're listening to the sequence. So I started to map the features that I could see in the DNA into audio. And I chose to use musical notes as audio because I felt comfortable with that rather than thumps and weird noises. We have this blue and green blobby thing here, which is called a DNA polymerase. And it's reading across the DNA sequence and during that process, it's making this pink thing here, which is an amino acid sequence. So I'm trying to copy that movement over time and processing the DNA with audio. I'm taking the DNA sequence and generating these musical notes from these groups of three. I initially started sonifying human DNA and then um, coronavirus happened. And I, I figured it would be more interesting to work on the coronavirus genome because I could sonify the entire sequence and look at it in its entirety. And as it reads along the RNA, these amino acids are being made, but what we're hearing is the musical equivalent of those. So let's have a listen. And I've also been working on techniques to try and make it a little more musical as well. There's other characteristics of the DNA which we can start to add. And it's this idea of introducing layers of audio, which is good for the, the DNA analysis, but it also creates a passage of audio that sounds musical. And then that's been the basis to take this audio into a, a recording studio with musicians and start to respond in a musical way to this. I really like the idea of making science beautiful, to, to take it out to the wider community so that people look at it and go, that's intriguing, I want to know more about that. I think when we first started doing it, we were very aware this was the genome that was causing so much havoc. We don't want to downplay the significance of it. We're all in lockdown and fearing for our health and everything. But once we kind of got over that, we, we could then think of the audio just as this strange musician. It does change the way you play music. And I'll spend, you know, hours just playing drums and the audio is quite challenging because some of the audio is on the beat. But then sometimes when you get to a gene sequence, 
because of technically of how the DNA works, it produces offbeat patterns. And then bringing musicians to play to the audio as if the audio is another musician in the room, just someone who doesn't communicate very well. The first thing is it sounds a bit otherworldly to them, it's a bit head scratchy what it represents. But once we start connecting with both the audio and each other in the room and start playing, we actually produce some music which I think we're quite proud of actually. The polymerase is moving along the sequence. What I'm trying to bring to the science community is a proof of principle that audio can represent DNA in a meaningful way. And that's the idea. So rather than making a protein, I'm making strings of musical notes. And you combine that audio with a visual. It's like how you can introduce a soundtrack to a silent movie. You'll hear something and go, oh, I should be paying attention to this sequence here. Science and arts are kind of separated into these silos or these different domains. Any kind of activity that links the two together, looking at science in a more open way, I think is really interesting. Mm -hmm.